my job as a, as a da'i, my job as a speaker, is actually to try to speak to the person here who is the least committed to Islam. My job is to try to address the person who doesn't even want to be here. That's the person I'm trying to reach. Because that person may be holding on to Islam by a thread. They may barely be holding on. They may already be convinced, I don't even want to be Muslim, I don't even know. I'm not so sure if I want to be, be Muslim. And they're sitting in this audience. And that person, if I start giving him examples of spending half of his wealth or all of his wealth, you know what they're going to say? I wasn't even sure about giving a hundredth of my wealth and you're asking for half or all, forget it. I'm out of here. This is way too much to ask. The guy already walked in thinking that Islam has way too much to ask and I helped him out. I helped him out by giving him the highest standards. The standards that not even all of the other companions could live by. That only the very, very, very top of them could live by. And I'm presenting that almost as though that is what you're expected to do. It isn't fair. It's just not fair. Then what do we do? In, a, in, the, in the communal discourse, in the, com, in the conversation that we have to have with our communities, the khatib al Jumu'ah for example, he has to understand that people are at different levels and you have to take it easy. You have to talk about the very basics and take it easy and give hope. But then you have a, you know in every masjid there's like a halaqa, there's a study circle. And there's like six or seven people that attended. Not, it's like, like 200 people or whatever. It's very few people. And they stick it, they come every week, they come every week, they come every week, they sit with the Imam, they learn more and they learn more and they learn more. And as they demonstrate that they are more serious, guess what? The leader, the Imam, the scholar, the teacher has to expect more from who? From them. From them, you should give them higher examples. For them, you should actually elevate their expectations because you want to make them rise to the occasion. But even as they rise to the occasion, you know what the next challenge becomes? They turn around as you, for example, some of you didn't know much about the deen four years ago. But you started learning some Arabic, you started attending some seminars and courses and classes, and you started listening to download after download after download, and you started taking all these crazy notes, and then you started giving a khutbah at your MSA or something, or a talk or a halaqa, and now you know a lot more than you did four years ago. But you know what happens? As you know more, you realize more is expected from you. And as you realize more is expected from you, you turn around to everybody else and think that more is expected from them too which isn't true. More is simply expected from you, but you can't put your burdens on them. Nobody had a larger burden on their shoulders than Rasulullah No one in human history ever had it, and no one in the human future will ever have a larger burden than this man had to carry وسلم, for 23 years, which is no time at all to do what he did. And yet, when he's sending people on a mission to spread the word of Islam, he's telling companions, Yassiru wa la tu'asiru, Yassira wa la tu'asira, make ease and don't make difficulty. Go easy on people. Don't go hard on them. SubhanAllah. He's telling, he's, this is instruction to Sahaba. He's not telling, tell people to submit to Allah and they better become the best example of submission immediately. No, 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 no. Just go easy on people. Take it easy. Yassiru wa la tu'asiru. You know? It's an incredible bit of advice.